so beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> and up next, I'd like to introduce Sonica McCarthy, founder of the Climate Media Coalition and Stop Killing Cyclists. Thank you very much, fellow protectors. I don't know about you, but already this morning I've shed tears. Anybody else been crying? Anybody else been crying? We're here because of grief. We're here because hundreds of thousands of our fellow humans have already died of climate crisis and millions of our fellow species have been burned to death in fires across the planet in the last years. We have a hero here from, from Sweden, Greta. Thank you from our hearts coming to the Extinction Rebel, Rebel, Rebellion, Greta. Greta says, it's time to break the rules. What do you say? I say, it's time to break the rules. What do you say? A third time. I say, it's time to break the rules. What do you say? I'm 60 years old. This circle represents all the life that was on this planet when I was born 60 years ago. This is what my generation has done. We have destroyed 60% of all nature that was on the planet when I was born. That is appalling. That is what is being done in our name. But no more. The Extinction Revolution says not in our name. This must come to an end. <laughs> Unless we rebel. Look at this picture. In 30 years time, if I live till I'm 90, there may be 10% of nature left on the planet as when I was born. What an outrageous crime to do at the Greta's generation. We have no right to do that. Four years ago, the last time I spoke in this square, I sat at the foot of Gandhi, the patron saint of non-violent direct action. I sat at the base of Sandy's, Gandhi's statue four years ago, and I was arrested for the crime of calling for fossil fuel exploration to be criminalized. I was cr arrested for chanting in a tent in the, tr in the tradition of Gandhi. I know many of you here today are here in the spirit of Occupy. Bless you. Occupy was here four years ago saying the planet has run out of time. I was arrested five times because I believe the political system is failing us. We've marched, we've petitioned, we've lobbied, we've voted, we've elected, we've spoken, we've cried, we've pleaded. And year after year, the fossil fuel economy, the fossil fuel barons, the fossil fuel criminals, who have captured Parliament, who have captured our justice system, who have captured our governance. They continue and they continue and they rape and rape our planet. I was here arrested five times and I'm calling you to be prepared to be arrested from now on because our oceans are being, are being uh, acidified, they're being killed, they're dying. Our forests are being destroyed. 50% of the forests that when I was born are gone. Our soil is going. Even our own government says the soils of Britain have only 40 crops left in them. How dare we do that to Greta's generation? 
our soil is being poisoned. Millions of people around Britain suffering from asthma. Millions of people around the world are dying from, from fossil fuel air pollution. It's got to stop. In September, the UN General Secretary said in alarm to the world, we've got just two years, two years to radically cut our carbon emissions, our humanity faces extinction. And what has happened? What have we heard? Did we hear emergency statements in Parliament? Did we hear uh, emergency meetings in, of governments around the world? Did world leaders meet in emergency? No. We heard silence. The American government says no. The Australian government says no. The Brazilian people have just elected a man who says no. And the British government has said nothing. The IPC has said we've got 12 years to get to zero or we're facing extinction. Radical runaway global change. And what is our government's response being? We got this week a budget, a disgraceful budget from the 1950s that destroys the 2050s. Shame on you, Mr. Hammond. Shame on you, Mr. Hammond. What the budget, unbelievably, not one single mention of climate change. 30 billion for roads, 9 billion for cars, 3 billion for North Sea oil, 0 for renewables, 0 for cycling infrastructure that would save our kids. That was what our response was to the alarm from the UN. So what is the case for rebellion against the British government? Unbelievable. 95% fall in solar panel installation in the last two years. The government is trashing the solar industry. It's vetoed all, this, all new onshore wind. It's given £80 billion pounds in taxes cuts to fossil fuel, diesel and petrol. Labour, Labour and the Tories are promoting expansion of airports across Britain. The British government is promoting fracking. The British government is slashing home insulation that will keep our elderly safe and healthy. The British government is refusing to invest in safe cycling infrastructure that would allow people to cycle and go to school and work safely. A government run by the fossil fuel corporations, for the fossil fuel corporations, against the people. It is time for rebellion. What is it? I say it's time for rebellion. What do you say? And millions of Britons remain in fuel poverty. Millions of Britons suffer from diabetes. Millions of Britons suffer from asthma. And billions across the world face extinction. But secondly, I wish to speak to the media who are here today. Ask yourselves, what are your organisations doing about this crisis? Why have you left the people in ignorance of the threat that faces us? I ask you reporters, I ask you to go back to your bosses and demand they cover the extinction revolution and the crisis that's facing humanity. The Chancellor had zero mention of climate change in the budget. The BBC, in its analysis of the big issues in the budget, had zero mention of climate change. Shame on you, BBC! The Guardian, supposedly the best paper on, the, on climate change, had 15 pages of climate coverage and the Guardian didn't have one mention of the word climate change. But they are the goodies. Then on the other side we have the tabloids who are claiming there is no such thing as climate change. Read the Express, we've got climate cooling. 
Read the, 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 the Daily Mail is attacking everything renewable, anything positive, they are offending. So I'm telling you that one of the most important things for the climate movement, as well as rebelling, is we must include as our target and bring on board the media. Without the media, our revolution, rebellion will not succeed and save humanity. So finally, we've made the case for rebellion. Can I have some water, please? <laughs> and I've made the case for some water. From my tap, I assure you. Right, work rebellion. So I've made the case for why our government needs rebelling against. I've made the case why the media must come on board. And so what is the solution? As I said, I've been part of a movement for 30 years of my life. Almost every single breath I've given, and I know many of you of yours have, and millions of people around the world in the fracking movement, in the climate change movement, in the animal protection movement, in the forestry movement. You've given your lives and souls, and what has happened? We have not succeeded in reversing it. So the time has come for peaceful, non-direct right, uh, direct action in London, in Britain, in cities across the world, in every village, in every town, and every city. So the call comes out from us today, get organized. We want rebellions in villages. We want rebellions in towns and capital cities around the world. This is a full-scale planet emergency. Around here today, we've got the statue of Gandhi, who took on the British Empire and won. We've got Millicent Fawcett and the suffragettes, who took on the British, the British establishment and won. We know Martin Luther King took on the American establishment and won. We know the protesters, uh, the climate protesters at King's North Station, those amazing heroes in the British climate movement, took on the coal industry and won. And we pray and shout out uh, our support and love to the fractivists across Britain. You are winning.